Before I do the introduction to this video, there is something that I would like to say. On the 26th of May, a 46-year-old black man by the name of George Floyd was murdered by a white police officer. He did this by keeping his knee on George's neck for a total of almost nine minutes, despite being asked to stop, despite being filmed, despite the fact that this man was clearly in distress and he was clearly going to lose his life without any intervention. This man's death has triggered a reaction worldwide. People are now listening and they are fighting for change. This, unfortunately, is just one of many police brutalities that black people have suffered in the last, I don't even know how long, since there have been cops, since there has been a justice system, since there has been law. Since black people have existed, they have not been treated fairly. They have been fighting for their basic human rights for around about 400 years. And for some reason, the world has not given them those rights yet. I have seen a lot of shitty things in the past two weeks. And although I've seen a lot of shitty things in the world, I've specifically seen a lot of shitty things in our plant community, a community that we're obviously all part of. It absolutely sickens me to my core to see that in the last two weeks alone, the amount of systemic racism in plant groups with plant influencers across general social media and even some plant shops is absolutely disgusting and it's sickening and it needs to stop. I see people in plant groups saying, you know, this is political, this this is a place for plants, there, there are other places to speak about it and not here. Congratulations, you're part of the problem. We all need to be talking about this, we all need to be fighting this, and we all need to be challenging our perspectives that are being quite frankly taught to us by society and everything else. I don't want this video to be an angry rant targeting, you know, di different aspects of not just the plant community, but the, the entire world that, you know, is not behaving correctly right now. I don't want this video to be like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave down a series of links below. It could be anything from, you know, ways to donate, petitions to sign, educational reading, or perhaps some videos or statements that have moved me in the past couple of weeks. So if you would like to support the Black Lives Matter movement or even just find out more about it and educate yourself and find out what is going on in the world today, then feel free to look at those links below. That is all I want to say right now. I want to give people the opportunity to go and explore this for themselves down below to really try and understand this movement and understand why it is not political. It is human rights and it has never been equal. It's never been equal. Black people have never had the basic human rights that we have had. And I know a lot of people genuinely weren't privy to that, but you need to understand the power that you have as a white person to help change that. So as I've just mentioned, I've left various links down below to, you know, read and check out relating to this movement. Now that I have said what I needed to say, hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to a repop with me. So as you guys may or may not know, I usually ask people a couple of days before a repop with me on Instagram, you know, is there anything you'd like to ask me? Is there anything you'd like to talk about today? So I have written down one or two things in a notepad in front of me that I'd like to get through today. Aside from what you guys have asked me, I have a couple of things that I'm doing today and believe me, I've had a bit of a rough morning to do with these plans, but I will get into that in a second. So today I actually have a couple more pots to try out. I did mention that I was not happy with my previous pots from the last free pot in like the previous video I did, but I've found some more self-watering pots that I think might be quite good. They are from the same brand that I've been kind of repping recently, and that is Lechuza. Now, this video is not sponsored. Any previous video from this date right now that you've seen that features these pots has not been sponsored. I bought these with my own money. But I found these pots here from the chooser. I've got this. I have another pot here, which I'm going to talk about separately. And I also have, oh, it's hard to grab. I have this pot here. So this here is the Lechuza Deltini pot. And this here is the Lechuza Mini Deltini pot. The only difference between these two pots is the size. They both work in exactly the same way. I'm not going to repot the plants from my previous video that I'm kind of unhappy with today. I'm going to plant some stuff into pure lecker today. Well, I say pure lecker. Some of it's going to be lecker. Some of it's going to be the substrate that Lechuza recommends inside this pot, which is, I think it's called Lechuza Pond. I don't really understand the naming behind that, but that's what it's called. So before I get into these pots, I'm gonna move these. I have another pot here that I'm not going to use today, mainly because I didn't realize that this pot is designed to be used with a nursery pot inside it, I think, according to what I've read. 
So I won't be using this today, but I will be using it very soon. This model is called Eula, I think. It's part of the Eula collection. And I think what happens is you put your own pot in here, you insert a wick up inside your pot and you use it to self-water that way. It's big, it's bulky, but I thought I should probably try it because if you can't already tell, I'm kind of gearing up to do a review on this particular brand. I haven't personally found any other self-watering brands that kind of match this one for me. I'm not saying there isn't any out there, I'm just saying I haven't found any yet. So I'm kind of wanting to try these out. Once I've tried this pot out, which no doubt you will see, I will be able to formulate a review for you guys. So I wanted to make sure I tested out all the available options. Well, not all the available options, because there's like tons, but the options that we'd probably use, right? I've tested out this model, the, I think it's the classical. I've tested this out several times now, so I'm very happy with this, but I really want to give these guys a go because they're a little bit different to the other models, and I'll explain why in a second. If there are any other pots actually from this range that you would like me to try prior to a review, or you'd just like to see me try them anyway, then let me know in the comments below and I will be sure to look that up. Because I remember a couple of repots ago, I was going to repot my Thai constellation, right? And I didn't get around to it. Lechuza seemed to do a model of pot that is like super tall and super cylindrical. I'm debating getting one of those for the tie, just so I can raise it off the ground a little bit. So I might pot that up in that. That's why you're not actually seeing me pot the tie up today. I'm potting other things up. We'll start with a question while I get ready, because why not? And I will intermittently tell you kind of what I'm doing with these pots. So the first thing somebody asked me was all about fertilizer. And I actually got, I say somebody, I actually got a lot of requests to speak about fertilizer, like maybe 30% of the questions that came in were about fertilizer. So I kind of use two different things. I use something else for the shop because I'm using a lot of liquor at the shop and I use something else here. I haven't necessarily found anything that blows my mind yet, personally, so far. All fertilizer seems to be kind of equal. I mean, I'm saying that in pure ignorance because I know that it actually won't be. I just haven't noticed any difference. I've tried orchid feed on my aroids. I think it's baby bio orchid feed. And I tried the regular baby bio on my aroids and I haven't personally seen a difference. To answer your question, my house plants get nothing but baby bio. And I'm actually fertilizing them probably a little bit more than I should. I'm doing it nearly every time I water my plants, but I'm doing it with such a low dose. I'm talking like a few drops into the water. I kind of prefer it that way. I prefer to go like, you know, little and often, and then I will cut back for a month and then I will go little and often again. I'm not saying that's the right way, that's just kind of what I do. And to be honest, I haven't had any issues yet. That's basically what I do though. I'm using something else at the shop. Obviously I need to test that. I don't want to speak about brands until I know that they're good, if you know what I mean. But here I'm using Baby Bio and honestly, I'm not having any problems at all. Okay, let's get our first plant out. And I've done something that's kind of cute, right? And I think you might like this. So let me pull this out. This may be a long video, by the way, just letting you know, this may be a very long video. This here, is my philodendron burly marks fantasy. It has been growing from literally a node. It did have a leaf on, but the leaf came off and it is growing out from a cutting. It has been in my biob for some time, but obviously it had nothing to climb onto. It stayed small. It hasn't done the best. So what I would like to do today is to put it in this little guy here. And to get him to climb, this is, I don't know if this is genius or just shit, but I made a thing because I don't have a moss pole. I don't have the facility to make a moss pole right now. Oh, get out. I took three, um, well, I took one garden stake. I cut it in half and then I cut another one as well. I bundled them into three and I took some twine and I wrapped it around these three stems. I basically, I have an open pot down here somewhere where I basically measured down to the bottom of the pot where, you know, the substrate would kind of end. And then I just began wrapping you know, twine around. It's not perfect, but it is temporary. I don't want to give this thing a proper boss pole until I have a better root system than this. So my plan, quite adorably, I, I know it goes to the top, but we should be fine. My plan is basically to attach, you know, this onto here like this and pot this in Lekka to see if I can get some better roots out of it. Very quickly, people are still asking me about USA shipping and USA shipping will happen. It's likely going to be September now but I think when it does launch, it will be a very, very sizable launch. It won't just be, you know, 20 plants or anything like that. It'll be a big, big launch. So I am kind of gearing up for that. Um, I don't want to do it any sooner. Plus I need to make sure that any, you know, side effects of COVID postal wise die down. So that's kind of the only update I can give you on that. I'm thinking about September right now, 
but it will be a big launch. It's still nice and warm in September. There shouldn't be any problems shipping like that. So that is what I'm working towards. I'm sorry I can't be specific, but I'm kind of gauging it as I go because obviously everything's still an unknown, but that is the plan. So these little pots, very cute. So, 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 so. I heard a rumor that these were designed for orchids, but that confuses me because I thought, and I don't know anything about orchids. I'm kind of just getting into them actually but I thought that you needed light to get to the roots of your orchid. That could be very wrong. I don't know. I don't know why I thought that, but this is a very, very cute little thing. So this here is your outer pot. It doesn't do anything. It is simply an outer pot to catch your water and to keep, you know, the water reservoir. Here, this was already built like this, minus the little, I don't know, cap on the top. This of course is your water gauge here, as you can probably see there, the water indicator tells you when you need to water your plant. And in here, you have a little cage where your plant will sit. This is raised to account for the water level like that in the bottom. So you can kind of see how much water you'd get out of it. And in the bottom here, you might notice a kind of string right there. So this string acts as a wick to deliver the moisture from the reservoir to the plant without it sitting in water. That's what it's for. So Lechuza gives you a bag of this, what they call Lechuza Pond, which I guess is Lechuza's kind of alternative to Lekka. I might use all of this in this video. I might not. I might switch it out for proper Lekka, depending on the plant. I think in every pot, I will at least do a small layer on the bottom to help facilitate the transfer of water, but I might not use the whole thing as substrate. I might switch over to Lekka. I'm not 100% sure yet yeah, what I want to do. But this should be very easy because my plants are already ready to go, which allows me to basically chat shit for the next half an hour or however long this video is. For this one, I'm going to put a small layer on the bottom of this substrate and then I'm going to fill in with lecker, I think. I think that might be the best way. So I'm going to do that. I will prepare a question while I'm doing so. Somebody asked me about the tape that is on my moss poles. I will just automatically link that down below. I need to tell you what it is, mainly because I actually can't remember what it is. So I will link that down below for you if you've been wondering what that green tape is I use around my moss poles. Check the description and it's there. So just pour some of this in. I'm going to pour in around about an inch. So not tons, maybe just enough, maybe about, I don't know if you can see. No, you probably can't see in the light. I've poured about this much, so it's not even an inch. It's maybe about a centimeter and a half of uh, this substrate in here. And I'm going to fill the rest up with like a, I probably should have rinsed that, but I'm not too mad because I can actually just rinse this through. That's another reason why I quite like these pots compared to these larger ones, because they have a cage that you can pull out and rinse, which is really, really great if you're feeding your plants, or if you just want to check on them, you know, a little bit, you see if there's roots growing out the bottom or anything, you can do that with these. So that's super awesome. I'm going to very delicately just drop this in. I need to work out where I want my little, my little thingy-majig. I feel like this is going to look either really great or really shit. Let me just have a look. I'm just going to kind of put them in both at the same time. I apologize if you can't completely make out what I'm doing. But honestly, this shit ain't that easy. So I'm going to put that like that. I'm going to put the roots where I want them. And I'm going to very gently fill this in with lecker the best I can. I realize this is like the quickest pot in the world, but it's just kind of how I wanted to do it today. I'm having a lot of success with lecker recently, so I thought I might get better roots this way. And I can't pot this up into a bigger pot and have a proper gloss pull, obviously, until I have better roots. So... Oh, I tell you what I've done though. I haven't brought anything to tie this plant with. I think I've still got some on the sofa of where I made this, well, this contraption. Oh no. <sighs> Sweating like nothing else. Right, let's try two of these. This is just the same twine that I used to make the pole with. I don't think it's anything special before anybody asks me. It's just basic, you know, fluffy brown twine. I really don't think it's anything to write home about. So if you want to try this temporarily, literally just start winding it round <laughs> and uh, make your own little pole. So another question. Oh, someone asked me how tissue culture was coming along. And the answer is it's coming along great. I've had a couple of contaminated batches, but generally speaking, it's coming along very well indeed. I've got some interesting results. I've definitely got some shoots coming along on a few different species. Actually, I, I kind of just went around my shop and just started snipping things and then <laughs> disinfecting them and then obviously tissue culturing them. So I have like a plethora of different stuff at the minute. Some stuff is coming on a lot further than others, but I am seeing some results. So I'm very happy about that. I also had some Monster Thai Constellation that was already um, TC'd. I think I've shown you it on Instagram before. 
I subcultured that, so I chopped that up and I divided it and I put it back into the medium again to, you know, proceed to kind of clone it again. So I've done that as well. So I have had some good results so far. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty happy about it. You're probably going to ask me now, you know, when can we see the results? And honestly, I'm not sure yet. I'm not in any rush. Um, I'd rather just show you guys some results when I've got like an array of different things to show you. Or I can sh maybe show you more of the development over time. And, you know, I feel like if I give it longer time before the update, you guys probably will get more out of it. So I may do that. It may be a while before you see kind of what's going on with those. I don't know. I haven't really got anything planned to show you anything yet, but there's not tons to see, if you know what I mean. It's it's underway, but it does take time. It's not an overnight thing, so. This is really hard to fasten with blue gloves on. I've got to tell you, I've really got to tell you. I kind of like this. It's kind of, it's almost a little bit rustic looking. It's very cute. My Dubai, uh, my Monstera Dubai that is, you probably can't see, but it's back there. It's kind of done in the same way, so it looks very cute. I just need one more and then we're done with this little dude. So another question that is quite honestly asked of me, I don't know, every time I do a repot with me and I say, you know, is there anything you want me to talk about? Is there anything you want to ask me? Every single time, approximately 80% of all questions asked are, are you single? Are you seeing anyone? Do you have a boyfriend? Are you married? Are you dating? What's going on? Kind of thing. And I've been avoiding, I'm just going to be honest with you guys, you know I'm honest with you. If I've got something to say, I'll just say it how it is. I've avoided the question because I, I just don't know if I'm ready to talk about that stuff yet. I put a lot of my life online, as you obviously know. I'm not really ready to go there yet. There's, you know, there's, there's no tea or anything, it's just, I'm just not ready to go there yet, guys. Uh, for now, I'm keeping my personal life you know, my, my family, my friendships, my relationships, I'm keeping that offline because I think that's really, really important. And I'm sorry if that, you know, frustrates anybody, but that's just what I've chosen to do for now. I'm not saying I will never speak about it. I'm just saying right now, I'm choosing to not speak about it. So yeah, you can keep asking if you like. I won't take offense, but I'm just probably not gonna answer that question, so. There you have it. I mean, it did make me kind of curious that everyone was asking me if I had a boyfriend. Nobody ever asked me if I had a girlfriend. Random. How presumptuous. Right, I think that is this cute little guy done. He looks a little bit silly. He looks a little bit pathetic. I don't know if I can kind of show that without showing me. Very difficult in this day and age with this camera, but that's kind of what he looks like. Really cute little Burly Marks fantasy grown from literally a nubbin. He's doing okay. I really hope he gets bigger, but for now, I think he's gonna do really, really well in this little pot. We shall see what happens. Oh, he's so cute. I kind of like this. It started off being just like a temporary thing, but it's actually kind of cute. Let's just hope it doesn't get moldy or anything like that. I hope that's not an eyesore because I think we'll leave him there. He looks a bit shit. Don't get me wrong. I know he looks a bit shit, but he's living his best life. Trust me. That's the best life he's had so far. So we will leave him like that. <sighs> I cannot stop sweating. It's not even funny. I should have worn a t-shirt, but I'm just kind of sick of wearing t-shirts all the time. That's all I wear, you know, just big baggy t-shirts. I'm so done. I'm so sick of it. Let's do a big plant. Let's do a big plant. Got it. Uh, let me just grab that. That's a bigger bag that you get with the bigger Latrusa pot that obviously works the exact same way. So let's just take that out for now, even though it's probably a lot easier to plant it this way, to be honest, because it's actually more sturdy. You might like the plant that I'm about to get, I've got to say. And I'm going to take this risk, guys, so you don't have to. So I've washed this off the best I can, right? I'm acknowledging fully right now. I haven't got 100% of the soil off these roots but I'm gonna take the risk. I do not advocate doing this. If you're gonna put a plant in Lekka, get that soil off that root. But just to let you know, I'm taking a risk with this. So this is my amazingly beautiful Queen Anthurium right there. She is very, very nice. These are her original leaves here, but since, well, this is actually original as well, but she's grown two more for me and they look stunning. But I noticed something about these pots. These pots are very tall. And I thought to myself, holy shit, this is perfect for aroids with long leaves. Maybe you've got like a beast melon or chrysum cutting with long leaves, or maybe a type with long leaves, or maybe one of these. This seems to me, I'm saying this before I try it out, this seems to me like this would be absolutely boss for plants like this. Because if I just sit that in there like that, 
my plant can get a lot bigger and it's still miles off the, you know, the, the, the table, the ground, the whatever. Whereas in a normal plant pot, it's a lot closer to it. So I'm hoping that my theory is right and this actually works really, really well. I am going to go more or less pure liquor on this because I know my Anthurium a little bit better now and I know that that's probably what this plant is going to want. I will put down the tiniest layer in the bottom, maybe the same as what I've just done, maybe a bit less, I don't know, just to coat it, just to help the transfer. There, tiniest little bit. That doesn't even cover the wick in the bottom, it's just kind of surrounding it, so that's only that's just enough for what i want so yes how rude of me restock so by the time you watch this this should be friday it could be the 19th today the day you're watching this there is a restock on my shop tonight at 8 p.m bst for everyone in the uk and the eu so shipping is still close to people outside of that um but if you want to take a look at what's on there, it should already be up. There might be one or two things that I have added since you may have looked, well, this is last week now, so that's kind of pointless me even mentioning it. But generally speaking, everything that is going to be launched is up there. I, from memory, because I'm saying this a week in advance, I have some Florida Ghost. I have a lot of Florida Ghost because I promised you all I'd get you some. I have a lot of Gloriosum. I have a couple of Chocos. I think I have, what do I have? I'm drawing a blank. I have a few things. I've got a couple of anthuriums as well, a couple of other philodendrons. I've got some stuff. So if you're interested, feel free to have a look. Um, yeah, that's all I've got to say on that, really. I don't like to generally plug my shop on my channel because it just feels a bit weird, but you guys are asking, so there it is. Generally, what is up there is what's going to be sold. Right, let's just pour this lecker in. You know, Lekka's pretty good for repot with me because it's it's kind of effortless, but my God, it's noisy. <laughs> so I'm gonna lift that a bit just to get maximum, maximum raised plant out of it. Now then, if I could just turn that a little bit, I'm thinking there is good. I'm thinking there is sexy. Maybe a little bit more that way. Yeah, boy. Oh yeah, boy. Okay. Okay. Ta-da. Let's see how that looks. Oh my God, that looks great. I thought this would be good for this kind of plan. I, I believe, I believe I'm right. We'll have to see what happens, but that's kind of sexy. So there is another plant in Lekka. As I say, this one has been grown in soil. It could go into shock. We could see some nasty shit happen. If it does, I will update you guys on Instagram, just, you know, so you know the pitfalls. I'm kind of taking this risk so you maybe don't have to. Um, I will let you know how this does in Lekka, but I have suspicions it's going to go pretty well. So let's put her there. Is she in the frame? Oh my goodness. I just love Queen Anthuriums. Can you tell? Can you tell recently? <laughs> a few people are actually asking me how those big plants in my shop that I unboxed last week, how they've been doing. Honestly, they're doing really well. The Anthurium, the Queen Anthurium has that lower leaf that was kind of going a bit. That's fully yellow. But the other two leaves are completely intact. Can you believe? They're completely intact. The melano, obviously, both of those took a little bit of a hit, but they're totally stable. They're growing, they're fine. They're even rooting right now. So I'm like, I'm so happy about this. I can't even tell you, to be honest. I'm very, very happy about it. Very quick one on who has been filming me in the shop. So by that, I assume you mean in the shop videos. I haven't been filmed every video I've had in the shop, but you will notice that I have been filmed a lot of the time in my shop. I actually just assumed people would figure it out very quickly, um, but the person that's been filming me in my shop is Ben. Ben has been my cameraman. He, of course, was my cameraman for a lot of my vlogs when I've gone to Germany and Netherlands. So Ben's been filming me in my shop because for things like the big Monstera and the unboxing, it's nearly impossible to unbox something and, you know, you move a bit, then you got to get up, you got to go back to the camera, you got to change the frame, you got to make sure you can see it and everything's fine. It's just a nightmare. And generally speaking, filming goes a lot smoother when there's someone filming you. So that is who has been filming me in the shop. It's been Ben. A few people have been asking me about the shop. No surprises. I think I get asked about the shop quite often as it happens. Give me two seconds, guys. Just trying to pull out a nice big Anthurium. So before I continue with that, this is the Anthurium Clarinervium hybrid that I got a while ago now in a plant hole and it was in water for a while. So the roots that were in water were a little bit screwed. They were, they didn't go black, but they were mush, presuming due to the phytosanitary inspection preparation process. So I had to cut those and I've rerouted this in Lekka. Now I rooted this in a vase, a very pretty vase. 
and I spent today a total of one and a half hours tweezing out pieces of lacquer with aquarium tweezers because the shape of the vase was kind of convex, so it had a, a you know a narrow neck, it was convex, and then it was narrow at the bottom. Now, obviously, that's a very stupid idea, planting something like this into something like that, because as soon as the root system occurs, you can't get it out. I got it out with, to be honest, minimal damage, but lesson learned. If you're gonna do something in Lekka, make sure that whatever container it is, even if it is a vase, just make sure it's straight up and down or it's, you know, more like a funnel shape rather than any other shape, because trust me, you will run into a lot of problems. I got out, what did I take out? I took out some of my mum's Monstera out of um, another, you know, container with lacquer in it and I actually had to smash that to get out so so this took a little bit of damage you know in the acclimation process post shipping this little leaf here also hasn't done amazingly but the other two large ones this one here and this one here have done fantastically this here is a new leaf on the way unfortunately I have made the tiniest tear in the top of the leaf today whilst trying to get shit out you know while I'm trying to get it out the lacquer so I'm a little bit pissed off at that but nevertheless, it's reasonably healthy plant. I have actually, you know, massaged these roots as much as I can to get the algae off. I would like to think that the remaining tiny coating of algae is going to die anyway once it's submerged into darkness. But we shall see. I'm all for checking up on these plants and making sure they are okay. Let's get another big uh, plant pot out. Where is it? Oh, it's over here. Okay. This is really hard to reach. Uh, so a lot of people were asking me a lot of different things about the shop. And honestly, as per usual, it could be its own video talking about the shop. It really could, because I get all manner of questions asked. But the question that was asked today were, you know, what were the, the hurdles of starting the plant shop? What were your fears? What was, you know, what were the things that you encountered? What things worried you? And to be honest, it's been such a blur, I had to really think about it before, you know, I, I realised I was probably going to answer this today. And let me just get rid of this shit. Totally not going to use that, I don't think. I'm a bit scared of using this. I don't know why, I just feel like there's not enough oxygen. I don't know. I think the thing, and it's not just starting the shop really, we're talking about starting a business, right, first and foremost. And I remember when I decided to start the business, I... I think that the main problem I encountered, and this is no shade to any of my loved ones at all, but the number one thing I encountered was um, just lack of belief that my idea would work. I don't think they didn't believe in me because I know that the people around me that love me, obviously my parents, they do nothing but believe in me. I think they're probably the most proudest parents that there are. Um, but I, I think... I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't think anybody expected the whole rare plant thing to be kind of what it's become. It, it's getting a bit crazy now. And I, I certainly didn't have that in mind when I started my shop, nor did I want to be, and this is no shade, nor did I want to be a little Etsy shop. I did want to go full force into this, you know, as a proper, you know, eventually a full on grower. But I think the main thing I encountered was just people not really believing that I could make it work. Um, it, it's difficult when, when your loved ones, you, you want to make them proud and everything else. And then, you know, they say to you, you know, just a bit of advice, don't quit your day job. And it's kind of like, well, shit, <laughs> no offense, but that advice turned out to be maybe, maybe not, not so good, but, um, but that's a classic example, right? A hurdle when you start anything, any business, and this doesn't just apply to plant shops. It, it applies to anything, anything you want to make your own business in. When you start out, you have to be the one driving it. I mean, this it has to be continuously throughout your business life, but it's you that has to believe in yourself. It's you that has to believe in your idea. You can't expect everyone to push you along and not help you, but you can't automatically expect support from people. And if you don't get that support from people, don't let it put you off. It sounds corny, but believe in yourself. And again, I am not shitting on any of my loved ones because I love them very much. You know, I know they love me too, but I know that that was kind of a thing. And I don't suspect that is anything, you know, out of the ordinary. I suspect most people when they start up businesses, if it's maybe something, well, it doesn't even have to be a new idea. A lot of people might say, you know, I, I don't think that's really going to work or, you know, have you thought about this, have you thought about that? So I would say that was definitely... 
kind of a hurdle. It was more of a mental hurdle that I had to overcome. It wasn't an operational hurdle or anything like that. It was a little bit of a mental hurdle. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna go into specifics about, you know, what different people have said to me, but they haven't always been supportive of the idea. Not me, but the idea. So I guess when stuff like that happens, the only thing I can say is, you know, you'll just have to prove them wrong yourself. And eventually you will, you know, when you, you become successful in doing whatever it is, whatever endeavor it is that you're, you know, taking on, beginning. Um, but yeah, you don't expect everyone to be on board with it. Um, you've got to believe in yourself and you've got to push yourself. And no one's going to get there but you. You know, it's cliche as hell, but no one's going to get there but you. So don't be disheartened if people aren't, you know, right in it there with you. Just they'll see. They'll see in time when you do better and you, you, you know, you grow. You, you. I mean, no pun intended. You're flourishing in business, right? They will see in time. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Try something else. Get back on the horse. Maybe go down a different avenue if that wasn't for you, or maybe you misjudged the industry you wanted to go into, or something like that. Try something else. Try something new. Don't give up. If you want to be your own. I don't want to say be your own boss because it sounds like some kind of MLM rant, but if you want to be your own boss and you want to do that kind of thing, perseverance, discipline, hard work, you're bound to get somewhere, right? You're bound to get somewhere. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. That was not supposed to be quite as, you know, power to the people as it was. Right, so I've just kind of plopped this beautiful, beautiful anthurium into here, like so. If anybody, by the way, has had any experience with this uh, substrate, this Lachuse upon, please let me know. I don't know if it's better than liquor or not. I don't even know what the tea is. I don't know what if it's supposed to have stuff in it. Maybe it's more pH balanced or something. I, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to use it until I figure it out. Because honestly, I kind of know where I'm at with liquor. You know what I mean? So I just want to keep using that. Plus these plants have grown in liquor, so. Well, not all of them, but this plant here certainly has. Right, so let's just raise that up a little bit. As you guys know, I'm trying to transfer everything I can to self-watering because I'm just so busy. I'm, I'm killing things, you know, by not watering them. If I go away and I come back a week later, I don't know if shit's alive or not. You know what I mean? At the minute, at the minute, actually, I've just had to, and I'm going to have to continue doing this today, but I've had to spray down my large melanochrysum that I hold here like a while ago, the same day I hold this, actually. And I've had to spray that down because it's had spider mites in the house. And that's red and white spider mites. So that's a classic example of what happens when you leave for a week and maybe your humidifier runs out and it gets dry and then things happen, things spread. So I need to just do what I can to look after these plants the best I can. Um, obviously that this doesn't help with pests. I mean, technically it helps with some pests because I'm pretty sure that gnats can't really get at liquor. Could be wrong, don't know. But you, you get what I mean. I'm just doing everything I can to automate my plant care so that I don't lose, well, you know, all the plants that I've, I've collected. And I think that makes another one, guys. That stopped recording and I wasn't aware of it. So I don't even know what I've missed out there as of recording right now. I've only just noticed that that has stopped. So I apologize if there has just been a huge subject change or something abrupt has happened. I'm going to restart what I'm about to do again because I know y'all don't know. If there's something I was, I've just tackled there that was important, I will just tell you in the next report because I can't re-report this. So just in case you may have missed it, I repotted my Anthurium Clarinovium hybrid into this beautiful planter right here in the same way that I have done with my queen, I have done with this one right here. Very, very beautiful hybrid. So we'll leave her right there. Right, so as I was saying, but I know you guys have not heard, this is my Monstera Silta Picana, and these are the roots. It is made from two cuttings that you should probably see in my hand right there. I'm going to place these cuttings into this smaller pot, the same as the other pot that we, you know, we saw before with the Burley Marks Fantasy. And I'm probably gonna try and use nothing but the Lechuza Pond substrate this time, because honestly, in order to review this, it has come to my attention in the last couple of minutes that I'm going to have to try the substrate in order to tell you if it's good, right? And then at least compare it to Lekka. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to open this now. I have a shit ton of this spare, so I guess that's handy if it turns out to be, you know, actually useful and good. So I will probably have to propagate this and give it a bit of the old snip snip. I'm going to take a little bit to my shop and start propagating it there as well. Yeah, I'm going to cut it at some point in the next couple of days, I think. Maybe I might cut it tomorrow before I go to the shop. 
just so I can propagate it and make it bigger because it saddens me that this is all I've got. It also caught spider mites, uh, which kind of sucks. I've treated it about five times in the last couple of days and it appears that we are clear, but we'll have to see. I'm getting really weird yellowing on some of these stems. I don't like it at all. I'm just gonna pour some substrate in. I don't see how this substrate can be better than liquor. And I say, I said this before, but it, for me, it's the surface area. I feel like you can't get as much oxygen to the root. So for me, I don't see why this is better, but I could be hella wrong. You know, I've been wrong before. I could be very wrong about it. So we'll just have to see what happens with this. I'm very open-minded though. Tell you what, it's not quite enough for me on the top. That's what they give you, by the way. This is probably a good thing to note right now. That's the amount of substrate that they give you. Um, maybe they're expecting more root mass to kind of account for that, or I don't know, but that's not quite enough for me. So I'm actually gonna put a little bit of lacquer on the top just to cover it up because it will actually support the stems. So let's pop that all around the top, like so. There, I think that's better because that's the front of the pot there with the logo on it. I think that looks a bit better. Obviously there's dust all over it from the substrate. I'm going to rinse this through thoroughly. I should have done that before. I haven't done it. Please do. If you're going to use this substrate, make sure you rinse it through. But I'm going to do that in the sink. And I expect that if I take the cage out, you know, and I rinse it um, in the sink, it will be fine and it will all come out. Otherwise, holy shit, just kill the plant. Lovely. So that is that done. I should probably move this. Obviously I can, the logo's on the back, I'll probably move it the right way. Although I guess if you don't want to see the logo on your pot, you could move it to the back. There's a thing. Um, but I will probably move that because I don't mind seeing the logo. It's okay. I'm not bothered. So that is my beautiful Queen Anthurium dark form in Lekka. I did rinse the roots off. I got as much as I could off. I didn't get it all off. So if something goes wrong, it's probably not actually the Lekka. It's probably me. I suspect it's going to go fine. We shall see. I will obviously let you know either on Instagram or you will probably see it, you know, in a plant tour or something like that. And you'll get to see kind of what happened. Thoughts on the planters so far? Honestly, loving it. I like these compared to obviously these big ones because you can't drain these. I don't know if you can see where my hands are. These big pots here, you can't drain them or anything like that. So for these, I actually quite like these pots for that reason. Will they be good? I will let you know. I can't see why they wouldn't be. I've used this self-watering pot before, but obviously I'll give you my full thoughts for a review. Speaking of reviews, a lot of people have been asking me for my bio review. I spent a little bit of time a couple of days ago now planning that video for you guys. It's probably gonna take a lot of footage because I'm gonna get a lot of footage of the orb, but it will be coming very soon. I'm gonna get that out as soon as possible. And then you guys are long overdue a Red Plant Index. For anybody that wants to know that Red Plant Index is going to be on Syngonium. I just need to make sure that I've included everything I could find and I've got the order of things the best that I can. I often struggle with stuff like this because if it's not in my arena, I struggle to believe, you know, when things are rare and when things are not, when people say things about them, I struggle with that. I know that I apparently famously got the Hoyer Red Plant Index very, very wrong. And apparently I got a lot of hate for it. I mean, okay, it's just a video, I tried, but apparently I got a lot of hate for that, for getting it wrong. So I'm gonna try my best to get it as right as I can, because obviously I can't be right all the time, but I do try. So that might take a little bit longer, because I've got a lot on in a minute. I've definitely got more stuff to repot, absolutely. I've got so many of these big Lechuza pots. I'm not, I'm not kidding. I can see them from here. I've got one big one, one size down from that, and then another one of ones this size to use. I need to put my mother's Alba Monstera into a plant pot as well with a pool. I've got some pools over there as well, off frame. I've got three, but I'm not happy with the quality. They're not as nice as these ones. So I'm going to get another one. I'm going to root the collection of cuttings I have a little bit better now that they're out of glass vases. And very soon I will be comprising that beautiful Alba for my mum. And I think that might be it for now. There's a lot of things coming. <laughs> They're just, it's kind of all over the place at the minute. I've got a lot on, so. Yeah, please leave uh, any comment you like down below. I will reiterate what I said at the start of the video in ultimate sincerity. I would love it if you could check out some of those links down below. There are links on where to donate to the Black Lives Matter movement, some links on information. There's some petitions to sign. There may or may not be if I can track down where they were from my stories some videos, some posts on Instagram that I feel explain things very well. 
there was a really great video that moved me a lot, actually, um, of a lovely woman of colour explaining uh, their point of view on why this is happening and, and how it has been for them. And it was likened to a game of Monopoly, if anybody's seen it. I'm going to try and find that and link it down below because it's, it's really moving and it made a lot of sense for me. So if you can find the time, I would love it if you could look at those links in the description. And I think until the next video, don't have anything else for you guys today. I've probably forgotten to say a whole bunch of shit. Without further ado, thank you very much for watching this repot with me. It was probably very long, or not, if we're missing half an hour. And I will see you in the next video. Please stay safe, whether that's due to COVID, due to protesting, due to anything. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.